Hey guys. Hello. All right. Good to see you guys. Today is Thursday, 8.30 Pacific time. Today, we're going to talk about the three reasons that you're struggling with your back end. Okay, the top three reasons I find out that most of people, you have this problem, so you're always struggling at your back end side. All right, let me ask you because how many of you guys struggling with your back end shots? You either I like, you make a mistake, I like, hit hit the net not really consistency or hit not far enough. How many of you guys have the back end shots problems? Leave me a good chat, and you can let me know what kind of shots you're struggling with. What kind of shots you're struggling with at your back end side? At your back end side. Live very good chat. Let's see. All right. Okay. And what kind of shots? Yeah, back end, back end shots. What kind of shot you struggling with? Live in the good chat. All right. Clear. What else? Yeah, I see. Uh, that's pack. You you say clear shots. What else? Yeah, clear, clear. Okay, I see many many people are struggling with the clear. Eh? What else? Okay, late back end. Are you going to do a late back end uh, clear or drive or like uh, drop shot? Drive. Okay, drive. Nice. Okay, let's let's do it. You guys ready? Okay. So, for the first reasons that most people were struggling with is grip. Okay. So for grip, when you do the back end, you gotta hold a bevel grip. Although, although when you start, when you just start. Like in the, if you are a beginner, you start to learn the back end. I would say you can start with the thumb grip. That's not a problem. But if you want to master your back end shots and your clear or your uh, drop, smash, those kind of shots, then you got to do the bevel grip. All right. So let's talk about a grip. Okay. Grip. This will affect your power generation. Okay. So I will show different way and you guys can see more clearly, okay? So let's say your racket, racket go like this, then your thumb, you kind of shake your hand, but the thumb, you guys see it here? Your th this is a thumb grip, all right? This, this is a thumb grip, thumb grip like this, but I want you, Put your thumb a little bit to this side. So that would be a bevel grip. So it looks like this. That's how you hold it. That's how you hold a bevel grip. All right, I'll show you a little bit clearly. Okay, bevel grip like this. This is when you're gonna hit the back and clear, back and drop, back and smash, then you're gonna do this. However, some of you guys have been asking drive shots, back and drive shot, then you might gonna hold the thumb grip, thumb grip like this, right? Like this way. You might hold like this, but bevel grip is like this, right? Hold a little bit on the side. Here, the grip on your grip, there's a small edge. Your thumb gotta put it here. Your thumb gotta put it there, okay? That's the first reason people were struggling with. Because if you hold, this is two common mistakes of your grip when you do the backhand shots. One is some people, they hold like this. They hold a forehand. So they use their wrist to hit. And they'll cause them the shot couldn't hit the far enough, right? 
or some people because it, the shot is uh, already really behind them they hold the thumb grip so they cause them go like this it's hard to hit it right so here's the things if you hold the variable grip you can open up the space and make your motion be more smoothly and helps you to generate more power at the end okay so that's a grip you need to remember for your grip you gotta hold a bit of grip how many of you guys let me ask you a question how many of you guys when you do the backhand you use too much wrist or it, some of you maybe don't even know what's your problem why why i swing like the shot couldn't hit that far especially for clear right how many of you guys have this problem like uh, i use my wrist a lot but my shot's still not far enough okay live in a group chat let me know let me see okay i see a lot of me 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 good okay okay yeah that's right so for a grip you guys remember bevel grip bevel grip is the most important things okay all right the second reasons today by the way today i will wrap it up a really fast i'll talk about the back end uh shot a little bit because i want to spend more time to answer most of you guys with questions Okay, most of you guys are backhand questions. So that I'll uh, answer you guys' questions. All right, thumbs up. Good. Okay, so the second reasons cause you your backhand clear or backhand shots couldn't very smoothly or not accurately or not consistently. These three problems is about your motion. The motion, for your motion, here's the things, here's the things. Most of you guys, let me show you the motion, okay? That's how you get ready, right? That's how you get ready. When you swing, if your elbow not leading out, you stuck it here, and your motion will start swing like this. Then, your, your motion will stop in the middle. So your shot for sure couldn't go that far. Couldn't go that far. That's it, I, I, I show you the, the mistakes. Let me show you a mistake. You go like this. Instead, instead, you go like this. Your elbow gotta lead it out first. A lot of people, when they do the backhand shots, their elbow will stuck it. So you go like, you go like this. So you can see, back to the first questions that I, I say, the reason, it's about your grip, right? And then you guys will use a lot of your wrists. So you go like, you go like this. That's why it will cost you your shot couldn't hit the far. Okay, the motion, elbow is really important when you do the backhand drop smash clear your motion elbow get to lead it out so how how you guys practice this today i'm gonna give you one exercise you can do it right now and start to start to implement into your practice and your to master your backhand shot i'll give you one exercise Are you guys excited for that I'm gonna give you one exercise to improve your backhand shot. Drop, can you improve your backhand draw, smash, clear, okay? So, elbow is really important for this. You gotta be like this, okay? Not like this. You don't reach out like that, okay? You gotta, imagine, imagine the shadow is say here. Right at here. When I'm gonna hit, if I my elbow stuck at here, then my forearm and my racket head couldn't swing forward, right? Because I'm gonna hit straight, my racket 
got to follow suit forward. That's how you got to do it, right? Instead, you go like, you keep going like this. So elbow is a key point. Sometimes will cause you stuck your, your motion. Remember your, your, your elbow. Okay, that's the second reason will cost you like that. Okay, the last one, the last reasons is about your position. Position, I talked a lot of position because I really focus on the footwork. You cannot get the right position, you can't get the right timing to hit the shots. You need to work on your footwork a lot, okay? So position is really important. And today I'm going to talk about two positioning. One is where you need to hit. Where we're supposed to hit the shuttle for sure. But today I want to talk about that say if you just start to learn the back end or your back end shot is not really like perfect or not a professional level yet. At this level, I want to talk to you guys about this. Okay. You can hit that's it, even right? You still can hit it here very late and get a shot go to the backcourt. That's not a problem. In this level, the level is a little bit higher. So I want guide you guys step by step. Let's talk about this first. Okay, let's imagine the shuttle is always in here. Okay, because I want this position, you get the shuttle always beside you, which is like this. You always hit it here, right? Instead, you hold, you hit the shuttle to it and there, like this. Okay, it's not you can't get hit really far from here, but in general, you start practice from here, and then get the right timing and power generation, get your motion right. Then you guys gotta use your same concept to implement hit at here or here can do it. That's not a problem, right? But I would definitely recommend you guys, when you start, try to get this to get the shadow beside you here, okay? What do I mean by here? It's when you're here, your fingers and your wrist get a snap at this time. That's how you, how you generate power and contact with the shadows contact with shadows. And I will mention how, how you contact with shadow with the Ricky face and shadows later on, okay? And the next position I'm going to talk about, about your feet, okay? For your feet, many people, when they move to the backhand side, they go like this. They kind of go like, uh, shuffle, right? And then they turn it and then shuffle again. Some of them, they just go like this. They turn and they shuffle. This will cost you too late. And you, you couldn't get the right timing by your feet and your feet couldn't help you to generate power. So your arm wouldn't be able to swing smoothly. Here's the key point. When you do the shuffle, the first step you shuffle it, right? You rake it up. So when you're gonna start to hit, let's say, okay, I'm, I'm ready to hit, right? The shuttle is already beside me. My right foot turn, which is because I'm righty, so my right foot turn, which is a rake it foot, and then when you step, you swing. Remember, you step, then you swing. That's how you generate power. You get it, step, and you swing. Not like, you're not like this, like, like turn and you swing like this. So your power is only from your arm. But if I do this way, the power will come from your feet and then your arm. Which is like, when you do the scissor kick, same thing, right? You gotta do it like sit and then jump out like this. That's that's how it works. You gotta you guys gotta use more your lower body to generate more power, so your upper body can generate more power with less energy. Does that make sense? Give me a thumbs up. So far, so good. All good. 
That's a top. That's a top three reasons that you might you might struggling with your back inside. Okay, that's the top three reasons. Okay, all right. So, as I just mentioned, how to contact Ricky Face with your shadow? Okay. So remember, I say hold the bevel grip, right? Hold your bevel grip. When you rack it up, you can see you rack it up. Fingers facing out like that. Okay, now go like this. You now go like this. You hold like this way. So which means your rack face will facing you like this way. Okay, let me show you like this. Okay, not like this. You're not like this. Or not like this. Okay, you go like this. All right, the reason you're doing this is because at the end, you're gonna start twist with your grip by your finger to generate power. This is how the power come from, like this. Okay, so right now I'm going to talk about how you can take the shadows. So you can see the shadows, if the shadows are here, I'm gonna swing at here, my finger start to twist the grip. And when I contact it, your racket face gotta already twist to become the flat, like this. That's how you hit a clear. Clear is like this, all right? Drop shot, your Ricky face a little bit angle like this. So you just go like this. This is a drop shot. Clear. Drop shot. Go like this. Okay. Smash. As soon as you do the clear, but at the end, your wrist got to speed up the snap down. That's how three different shots, you only change your last moment. You won't remember, it's only change your last moment. You won't hit three different shots with three different motion. Otherwise, if I'm your opponent, when I see your emotions, I know what are you going to do, right? Okay, so that's a key point. You guys gotta remember. Keep the same motion, change your last moment. Okay, right now, I'm going to give you one exercise and I'm going to start to answer you guys your questions. So you guys prepare your questions and I'll answer you later. Right now I'm going to give you one exercise and you can do at home anywhere to improve your swing motion. Once your swing motion get better, your backhand shots will get better as well. Okay, okay, here we go. You see a chair here? So, remember what I say is your mo about your motion. Your motion sometimes is because your elbow couldn't lead it out. And some people, because their upper body get too stiff. So when they swing, their upper body will swing like this. That, that all will affect your, your uh, quality of your back end shots. So how are you gonna do this? You gotta sit on a chair. All right, you gotta sit on a chair. You don't, <clears throat> you straight up your upper body, hold a bit of grip, you move like this. Okay, then you start to use your elbow, pull it back, you don't turn your upper body, see? You sit on a chair, you couldn't like, move that much, right? So this is the best way to help you practice the swing motion. You gotta make sure to swing up. Okay, let me show you on the other side. Okay, so it, it looks like this. Go like this. See, elbow lead out, swing forward. You won't be like this. You won't be like this. So elbow lead out. 
So this exercise, I recommend you guys. If you if you guys okay, you can do twenty for three to four sets every single days. It won't take you too much. It only takes you like three to five minutes to finish, and you can start to improve your backhand shots. Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention one thing. This one also will helps you to improve the backhand shot, especially your timing. You guys want to know what is that? Give me a thumbs up if you guys are excited and get to know. Want to know? Okay, good. All right. So here's the thing. You guys know what it is? This is a Ricky Carver. Okay, Ricky Carver. Ricky Carver is really crucial. Like, can help you guys improve your power generation and make your the Ricky face when you can take the shadows be more accurate. This is kind of like magic. I really like this. Some of my my students. They train their backhand clear or even the forehand clear. Let's say the beginner when it starts, they couldn't even hit the shadow, right? Or the shadows, the timing always get wrong. They use a record cover for a few weeks. Then that's a magic. All right. Let me tell you the reason. All right. So how are you gonna do this? Put on a record cover. See, this is record cover, right? Ricky cover. So for the Ricky cover, if you swing, let's say I do like this. There's a resist about the air, right? Resist. All right. So for the backhand, remember if I hold the bevel grip, if you swing this way, okay, you swing this way. There's no air resist. There's no air resistance like this way. But only like this. Only your Ricky face facing forward or push forward that have a resist. So remember, for the motion when you start, your Ricky face gotta face you, right? So your swing motion gonna be like this. When you swing like this, there's no resist. When will we have a resist? It's only at last moment when you contact with the shadows, then. Your finger twists your grip. That's a resist coming from. So if you practice this way, and you feel oh there's no resist, I, I let me show you an example. If you always do like this, there's no resist, right? There's no resist. You keep going like this, right? But if you twist it at the end. That has a resist, and once you have a re resistance, then you know the timing and your Ricky Ricky face is flat enough, right? Because as soon as your Ricky face flat enough, they must have a resistance through the air. But if you don't. There's no resist. Then you know, oh, that's wrong. That's wrong. So that's why you can adjust the motion by yourself through this practice. And on the the other hand, that when you practice, you sit on a chair, right? You sit on a chair when you practice without the racket cover. You just practice the motion. How do you know your motion is right or wrong? There's one way. You can try it. You can look at the mirror. So let's say you put the mirror right in front of you, and you practice the motion. You look at your motion. You look at your motion. So you can self practice. You can self practice and still still improve your backhand shots. Still improve your backhand shot. All right. Okay. Then that's back to the questions. That's back to the questions. Right now, I'm going to answer you guys the questions. Let me know any questions. All right, especially target for a backhand. If you guys have a backhand, footwork, uh, 
any backhand shots that you want to know, I'm going to answer to you guys. Okay, that's, that's back to the questions. All right. So, Aline, Aline, uh, you say, should, should our wrist be locked at 90 degrees during the shot extended? Oh, okay, that's a good question. Uh, your wrist will be locked, like, not like this. It correct. It won't be like, go like this. You'll go like, and you pass it, right? Again, so you go like this. So you pass it, you won't go like, unless, let's say, unless you do the smash, right? You smash, you gotta go it down. But when you do the clear, you pass like this. Because the most important thing is that this, this timing that you hit, right? So you go like, you pass it. Okay, let me show you when I stand it. In a standing position, you go like this, right? Right, you go like this. So your, your wrist won't become like that. And most of people have this problems, like they go like this. That's the, back to the first reason I say, people sometimes use their wrist a lot, they go like this. So the wrist will feel really loose and couldn't lock it. But you not get stiff to lock it. You just like feel smoothly and then once you generate the power, you step forward, then you, then you lock it. You only go like this. You don't go like, you don't go like that. Okay? Okay, so Aline, that's a good question. I like that. I like that. Okay, that's back to uh, Instagram. Here's the questions. Let's see. Okay. So, uh, oh, right. Oh, right. Okay. So, as a badminton 21, they asked about the backhand footwork. They want me to do one more time. And I'm going to do this for you guys. All right. So, for the backhand footwork, here's the thing. Start with the left foot. Let's say if you are righty. If you are righty, all right? If you are righty. If you are lefty, then you start with the right foot, okay? So you guys will go like this. Small step, but your upper body still face you forward. All right? Right foot push, do the one shuffle. And then, rake it up. Turn it. Go back, shuffle. Let me let me do one more time. All right, set, shuffle, turn, go. That's how you do the footwork. Okay, for if you're lefty, you can either do like this, right? Set, shuffle, turn, and go back. All right. That's a good question. I like that. I like that. Okay, next question. All right, let's say, uh, oh, Lawrence. Hey, Lawrence. <laughs> Any tips for self-practice back and drop? Okay, that's a good question. So uh, for right now, during the COVID, like, you guys, it's hard to like the group training or something like that. In, I, I would say in most of you guys in the country, right? So if you want to self-improve your backhand drop shot, three things I want to give to you. Three things. One, you got to practice the motion that I just mentioned. The motion, people ignore this. We've been doing this all the time. You got to practice your motion first. All right, practice your motion. Second things, second things. Lawrence, I think uh, for you, I would definitely recommend probably you find a partner, find a partner to practice the drop shots. Practice the drop shot, like one-on-one, -on -one, that's fine. One-on-one, -on -one, that's fine. Because drop shot, it's hard to practice with the wall, but here's the things I want to give to you. is when you contact with the shadows, you can practice hand one shadows at your place and you just feel it 
the timing that you slice it. You can hand the shot up, hand the shot up at your place. So you can practice by yourself. You can practice by yourself. The third thing is I would say you pause the footwork and practice the swing motion. One is you only practice the swing. The other one is hand on one shadows. You practice. The last one is plus the foot or. The reason I say you gotta plus the foot or is because most of the time that your drop shot will hit the net is you too rush. You either your your feet run really fast, but your arm not coordinate very well. So that's a key point. And Lawrence, uh, here I would say like uh, upper body relax. That's the most important for you. Don't keep your upper body too stiff. Okay, I hope you guys uh, answer your questions. All right. Okay, let's back to the next questions. What else? All right, Instagram here. For all the backhand shot, should uh, be well grip. Bevel grip is common. Okay. So all the back for all the backhand shots, all the backhand shot, except except uh, the drive shot. I, that's what I'm saying. Okay. For the clear, smash, and drop, you can hold a bevel, bevel grip. Even your backhand, even your backhand net shots, right? Backhand net shot can go like this, right? Bevel grip like this. Cross net, bevel grip. But backhand net kill, you do the thumb grip. You do the thumb grip. That's a good question. I like that. Okay, next. Let's, let's see the next questions. All right. Oh, okay. Hold on. Here's uh, so so many questions. Okay. Uh, so I see Andy Stewart. Does the racket rebound a little? Oh, good questions. Some of you guys, when you practice, when you practice, do the backhand or you hit a backhand shot, your your racket will rebound like this. You go like, you don't need to do this. Imagine this, imagine this, you do the forehand clear. You won't go like this, right? You won't, you won't be like, like, you will smoothly just follow through. So I would say you don't do, on it, we bump back like that. You gotta follow through forward. Let's do the full motion for you. Like, you gotta, you gotta do it like this, right? You won't be like, you can see if I do this and I follow through, my shoulder will start to follow through forward. And at the end, I turn my lower body back, I follow up, follow up to the next shot, right? But what if I do like this, then my weight still move to the back. I, I wouldn't be able to move back and follow up to the next shot. That's the reason. So don't, don't rebound like this. You got to follow through to complete your motion. Okay. That's a good question. So I like that. Thanks, Andy. Okay. What else? Okay, let's say uh, a street monanti. You want me to do the backhand footwork again? Okay, let me show you one more time. Okay, so for for the backhand uh, footwork is like shuffle, turn, step, and go back. Okay. So uh, I also mentioned in uh, in my like back and clears uh, videos, you can rewatch it again, or you can after this you can rewatch it again as well. All right. Okay. So next, let's see. Uh, Ponam Sharma, how to keep eye on the opponent's whole courts while doing the backhand? Uh, okay. 
Good questions. So your questions that I I, I will assume like that. I will assume if your opponent push you, right, and force you, you get to do the backhand shots. But right now the question is when you do the backhand shots, you don't know where where where's your opponent, right? That's the things. Okay. So the first things you need to know, you need to know is where did your opponent hit the shot? So force you to do the backhand shot. This is really based on experience, but here's the tips I want to give to you and to help you. Okay. So let's say my opponent pushed from the backhand shot at the front court and pushed through my backhand side. So at this time, when, when opponents see I'm doing this, his weight will shift a little bit to the forehand side. Right? In this case, what I'm doing is usually I will start target a little bit to the cross or straight clear, it's, it's okay. So how to observe that, you need to understand where did your opponent hit that shot first. And then based on your experience, that's why uh, every time in all my videos, I always say you need to know the purpose of each shot. Because once you know the purpose of each shot, then you know the purpose of each shot sometimes the purpose of each shot that your opponents hit. So it's kind of like mental games like that. That's why badminton is like a mental game, like chess, you know? So you, you can't always say accurate, but you can base on that, the purpose to start to adjust your strategy. Okay, Sharma, that's a good question. I like that. Okay, any questions? Okay, oh, here, okay, let's see. Let's see how a okay advanced learner. How about when late? That is when the shadow is behind you. Good questions. Good questions. Okay, as I mentioned, right now, let's say when you just start, you practice. Uh, you practice. You hit clear at here, and right now you already really good at it, you practice a lot and good at it, you're gonna start, okay, how can I hit the shot behind you? Same concept, but the power is different. You get a general power with more with your wrist. Let's say you go like this, right? That's how you're gonna, because your wrist gonna still follow too forward and your elbow still need to lead it out. But the reason, because the shuttle is behind you. So it's far away. Most of you, you get to use this power more. So if you don't have this yet, the don't learn the late shots because you will cause you maybe sometimes uh, your, in, in, your wrist will get injured. That's a key point. I don't want you guys, I don't want you guys to step by step. Start with this first and try to get the right timing of a snap on your fingers. Then you move on to here. Okay. That's a good question. Advanced learner, all good? Okay, let's take one more question here. Let's say take one more question here. Okay. Uh, Chen Yu. Okay. So. Can you guide how to improve the backhand in gym room? So uh, in the gym, like what kind of gym? Like like workout gym or or what what else? It's in the community center or or like in the workout gyms. And what you want to improve the backhand uh, motion because to, I mentioned those three uh, concepts. So when you stay, when, when you're at a gym, some of the gym have a mirror, that's good to practice the motion, to look at a mirror and, and start to practice that. Okay. Yeah, workout gym, right? So when you work out gym, 
here's a key point. When you when you at a workout gym, that's a really good. Because workout sometimes they, they do have a weight. You can hold a like light weight, not a really heavy. Okay, light weight. And just hold it. You can like dumbbell, you know, and then hold it. You practice the motion. This way you can increase your wrist power as well. But you gotta make sure, you gotta make sure your motion do properly. So sometimes when we were in the national teams, sometimes when we go to a gym, we still have, uh, take our rackets, go over there, right? Because sometimes we, we do the weights and then when we practice swing, we will do like see the mirror and see the motion, get the feeling. That's a key point. Okay, you gotta make sure you swing properly first and then add the weight on that. So when you do it at a gym, you can do the practice I just mentioned, but get the weight, you can get the weight. But before you get the weight, you gotta do it properly first. All right, all good? Yeah, improve the power, that's right. So that's how, that's how you can do it. That's how you can do it. Okay, let's take one more questions. Chen, I like that questions, by the way. Okay, let's take one more question. Uh, Chris, Krishna, when the, when the bird goes to the backhand court, how to choose to overhead or, oh, nice. My doubles partner says always prefer forehand. This question's perfect. I like that. The reason, okay, people were struggling with the backhand side. There's a two different players. One is they're really good at overhead side already. They're really good at overhead side. But the shuttle in the game is still faster than their thoughts or their move or their emotion like that. Then they're gonna work on their back end, but they're really good at overhead side already. The, the other player is not really good at overhead yet, but because really struggling at the back end side, so they want to learn the back end. I would definitely recommend everyone here in this room, you gotta start to learn overhead shot first. Okay, I, I remember when I back, back to when I uh, junior, like we practice a lot of overhead shots like this. You gotta do this more often. And most of people who are struggling with overhead shot is because of their footwork. Their footwork. And back to your question, it's how you decided. So it's uh, Krishna. Your question, how to decide it. Okay, here's a key point. When you did an initial step, your opponent hit the shot. You see the shot has come like, all right, let's say, let, let's do this, it's more uh, clear, clear. So you go like, if your shot is still go like this and you start to move, you can do the back, you can do the overhead. But if the shot really fast, once you do it in your step, the shuttle is past you. The shuttle pass you right away, then you gotta do the backhand. So it's based on this. After you do an initial step, some, sometimes, especially if your opponent do the push shot at the front, they do the push. The shot will pass you because that's a push shot's purpose. The push shot purpose is you need to pass your person. And if you pass your person, let's say you start get ready and your opponent do the push, you do an initial step, the shot's pass you, what are you going to do? Then you can only do the back end because you, you can do that. You can do it like this, right? But let's say if your opponent do the clear, even punch clear is fast, right? It's fast, but you still have the time to make you to rotate your upper body. Then you can do the overhead shot. Prefer overhead shot for sure. Especially when you play doubles. You won't see a lot of doubles player they keep doing the backhand smash. Most of the players, they go like overhead all the time, right? 
So that's a key point. That's a key point. Okay, Krishma, uh, I hope that answers you like it. Okay, I'm going to take one more questions, okay? One more question. I'm going to take one more questions. Oh, okay. Instagram here, someone asked me about the backhand reverse slice. Okay, that's good questions. I'm going to answer that. So this is the last question I'm going to answer. So he, here we go. I'm gonna, and, and I'm going to wrap it up here. Okay. So for the backhand clear drop smash, your Ricky face will be like this. Right? Let me see the back a little bit. So your Ricky face will be like this, right? For the reverse, let's talk about a forehand reverse first. Your forehand reverse is like this, right? You go like this, like this way. You kind of like your wrist say bye bye like this, right? That's how you do a reverse. That's a forehand. So let's talk about the backhand. The backhand, elbow lead out, same motion. When you're gonna contact it, Index fingers and your wrist gotta do the other side as well, right? So you gotta do the other side. You won't follow too forward like that, but you go to the other side. Same as you, I'm a righty, right? Let's say like my backhand side is someone who's lefty, their forehand side. If they do like this, same motion. Different grip. Okay, that's a good question. All right, so I hope you guys enjoy today's live sessions. Every Tuesday and Thursday, every Tuesday and Thursday, I do have a new content for the live stream. And then you guys can prepare any questions. Every time you practice, you play badminton today, this week, any questions? then you can wait until Tuesday and Thursday. Ask me the questions. I'm happy to help you guys. Okay. Okay, I'll see you guys next Tuesday at the same time, 8.30 a.m. Pacific time. All right, see you guys. Bye.